Well, to discuss de Klerk's legacy, I'm pleased to be joined now on the line by William Goumede. Uh, he's in Johannesburg and is the executive director of the Democracy Works Foundation. Thanks for your time today on France 24, sir. Um, what are your thoughts today on the news of the death of de Klerk? I think, um, you know, um, Evie de Klerk's um, legacy is, is obviously contested in the country, depending on who you talk to among the, both the white community and the black community. So it's not a black and white thing. It, within both of these communities, you know, there are different views um, of him. But I think the most important thing is that he has cemented his legacy um, because he had the, the courage um, to end official apartheid and to unban um, um, all of um, the liberation movements um, that fought against an apartheid and also to release uh, political prisoners. So that was important. So in the, that context, the end of apartheid, he was at the same, made him at the same level as Michael Gor Gorbachev uh, at the, uh, that brought uh, towards the end, uh, the end of the, the Soviet Union and, and official uh, communism there. So that really is important. And you must, if you think back during that time, um, he did not have all of the support uh, among the white community. So it was a courageous step within his own context. Um, so essentially he grasped the moment and he knew uh, that he had to do, um, he had to end apartheid, even if he perhaps, you know, at a hard level um, may not want to do that, you know, at his head space and the intellectual level, he, you know, he, he felt um, he, it had to be done um, otherwise, South Africa is going to end up um, in a civil war. That said, though, there are many people today who would say de Klerk had many failings. One of them was that he refused to apologise for apartheid and for white rule. What do you make of that? Um, yes. Um, so it, uh, the fact that he refused to apologize for apartheid and for colonialism really is a blot on his legacy. Um, you know, many South Africans, you know, ask him and demanded from him, um, black South Africans, you know, for him to apologize as the last white president um, South Africa. He refused um, to do that and making reconciliation very difficult because in situations like South Africa where the people were oppressed by autocratic regimes like the apartheid regime, at the end of those regimes to make reconciliation possible, um, you know, the leaders of those regimes must apologize um, to give, you know, to almost to return the humanity of those who suffered and to recognize and acknowledge the suffering of, of those who were oppressed and in South Africa. Africa's case, the black uh, community. He refused to do that. And that really, you know, many black South Africans are very angry about it. And, um, and secondly, also, you know, up to his death, he refused to acknowledge that apartheid was a crime against um, humanity. He insisted that it wasn't a crime and that apartheid wasn't as bad um, as all of, you, you know, other kinds of crimes against humanity. And that really has left a bitter taste among, uh, you know, um, most black South Africans and has made reconciliation between black and white South Africans very difficult. Well, a, a bitter taste, you say, for many black South Africans today. So I'm interested in what um, in some of the international reaction we've had coming in, I want to quote to you the British Prime Minister Boris Johnson. He said that de Klerk changed the course of history by freeing Nelson Mandela. So very little criticism from, uh, from the UK Prime Minister there. Are you concerned then that at least internationally de Klerk's legacy may, if you'll forgive the phrase, be, be whitewashed here? Um, yes, I mean, there will be a, a white was to an extent. And of course, also, it is important that the cleric did change the course of history. Uh, and, you know, oh, and different people will say in South Africa, if you, you know, if you're coming from where I were coming as, you, you, you know, victim um, of apartheid, would say, well, you know, he had no choice uh, because internally the government uh, by the late 1980s had lost control. And outside, um, internationally, there was a lot of pressure on, on, on the government. So, you know, the apartheid government had run out of excuses. And then economically, internally, economically, South Africa um, was in a very difficult uh, position at, at the end of the 1980s. So the clerk almost didn't have 
a choice moving forward. And then, of course, there was the potential of a civil war. But nevertheless, we have to recognize the fact that he made a political decision um, to end official apartheid and to begin to negotiate um, with uh, black leaders. That is very important um, for his legacy. Um, and it has to be recognized, despite, of course, you know, all of um, the problems that, that we have, you know, all of the mistakes that he have made um, in the process and thereafter. William Gumede for us there in Johannesburg. Thanks very much indeed, sir, for your time and for your analysis on the programme.